Hi folks, Modelling Mark here again. This is the last video in the series where I complete the knurling tool and test it. These are the various pins and axles. I didn't bother videoing them because it's all very straightforward stuff. This one's the T-bar for the adjusting handle. That's just made from a piece of quarter inch mild steel. These two are the pivots for the main arms. They're made from quarter inch silver steel and they're turned to an accurate one inch long so the ends are flush with the side plates. These two are the axles for the knurling wheels. They're made out of a quarter inch silver steel threaded with an M6 thread on the end. These still need to be hardened and they also need a screwdriver slot cut in the end. Now I think I made a bit of a mistake with these two. The drawings show the thread overly long and I originally thought that was a mistake on the drawing. So I've made the thread just long enough so that it's flush with the side plate. However, now I've finished the tool and looked at it, I think that the excess thread is there for a lock nut, uh, presumably to stop the knurls undoing the axles. However, I shall see how it goes when I'm using the tool. If it proves to be a problem I'll just make some new pins but hopefully I can get away with it. I've put the pin in a collet and I'll cut the screwdriver slot with the slitting saw in the mill. This slitting saw has a bit of run out which is not a great problem because I'm only cutting a screwdriver slot so accuracy is not critical. However I do want it to be central so what I've done is I'm spinning the spindle by hand and lowering it down gently until I can just hear it rubbing and I zeroed the DRO now I move the Splitting thought of the underside of the pin, I can repeat the process. Now I can use the half function on the DRO to find the centre of the pin, allowing for the run out in the saw. Now of course it's straightforward just to cut the slot with the slitting saw. I went about a sixteenth of an inch deep. And here's the finished pin. And that looks pretty central to me. The thrust washer is next. This is just a small brass washer that sits between the adjusting nut and the upper rocker. We'll start off just by facing it off. And then we turn it to the correct diameter which is just under half an inch. It's a little bit narrower than the arm so it doesn't fail on the side plates.
a quick measurement and yeah that looks good enough now we need to drill a hole to a quarter inch Finally we passed off to the correct thickness. After a bit of deburring there's a completed washer. Nice simple part. The last major piece is the adjusting nut. This is turned from a piece of steel bar with an M6 thread up the middle and a hole for the Tommy bar. As always we start by facing the end of the bar off. Next I'm going to drill the hole all the way through the length of the part and then I'll tap it with the M6 thread. The tap's not long enough to go all the way through so I'll tap it as far as I can and then I'll counter bore it from the other side. Now that is the centre drill going in, apologies for the rubbish camera angle. Now we go in with the pilot drill followed by the tapping size drill. Now I'll spare you the tedium of drilling the very deep pole that took over 10 minutes. I'll just fast forward to the finished hole. And that's the 5mm hole all the way through the part, ready to be tapped with the M6 tap. The tapping's done in the lathe, and the tap's kept straight with the sprung-loaded tap follower held in the tailstock. Now I won't bore you with the tedium of tapping a deep hole, I'll jump forward to the end.
and that's the whole tap as far as the tap will go I think it's about an inch deep next I turn down the waist of the adjusting nut this is a simple turning operation but it's quite a lot of material to come off so it's long and tedious I'll spare you the details and I'll skip to the end Now I'll take a light skim off the bottom face of the adjusting nut, just to tidy it up. The shaft of the adjusting nut is quite a prominent feature on the finished tool so I'm going to polish the machining marks out with a little bit of emery paper. After all we want the tool to look nice. I've changed out the three jaw chuck for a collet. This is so I can hold the shaft of the adjusting nut without risk putting any chuck marks on it. After all, having just polished it up, I don't want to risk putting any marks on it. Now, I don't know if you can see, but that hole is anything but central. The drill obviously didn't so much wander, but took a hike. Not to worry, I've got a plan for that. Anyway, I'll carry on, I'll turn the adjusting nut down to its proper height. I've put the adjusting nut in a square collet block in the mill. I just centred the drill using the DRO half function and now I'm just drilling a cross hole for the T-bar. Oops, a little bit fast with the RPMs. Drill definitely wasn't happy, so we'll dial down the speed. That's the hole drilled and then reamed out to a quarter inch.
just a quick check to make sure the T-bar fits nicely. That's the T-bar has been glued in with Loctite 603 retaining compound. I don't want that to come out again. Now the hole down the middle needs to be counterbored to a quarter of an inch down to the depth of the threads. I've got to go down about half an inch. Now remember that offset hole? That's not a great problem. All I'm going to do is use the half function on the X and the Y directions to centre on the adjusting nut. Then I can counterbore knowing that the hole is concentric with the diameter. I'm going to counterbore the hole with a quarter inch end mill to make sure it stays straight and doesn't follow the wonky hole. But before that I've got to drill out the centre section of the T-bar. I'll do this by starting with the centre drill and then drill it out to 3 sixteenths. This is the 3 sixteenths drill and I want to make sure I don't go down into the threads themselves. So I've used a shim there and zeroed the z-axis and I can go down on the DRO to just half an inch. Now I can go in with the quarter inch end mill. As before I've used a shim to touch off on the top of the part, then zero the Z axis. That's a completed adjusting nut and that came out quite nicely and that was the last piece of machining to do on the project. The axles for the knurling wheels need hardening and tempering so we start off by heating them to a cherry red with propane torch. Once they get to a nice cherry red, I'll drop them into oil to quench them. This is new lawnmower oil, which is just something I happen to have lying around. When they've been hardened, then they need tempering. So I've sanded these down to bring back the shiny metal colour. Now I'll heat them with a propane torch until they go to a nice straw. Even though, even though I use a technique of giving a bit, bit of heat and then taking the torch away so I can see the colour. I still ended up taking them a little bit too hot and they've gone with a sort of blue colour rather than a straw. So they're a little bit over hardened but I'm sure they'll be fine. Now these are left to cool down naturally. There's no need to quench them for the tempering. Now a quick test fit shows the arms are actually locking so I need a little bit of a shim on the space of lock between the two uh, side plates. Now to finish the arms off I've given them a quick polish on the buffing wheel. This has taken the machining marks out and given them a little bit of a polish, not a great deal. It just makes the tool look nice and shiny and pleasant to use. Here's the finished set of parts, a little bit on what I did for finishing. 
the side plates, the tool holder block and the spacer block have all been finished with the chemical blacking. The arms had all the machining marks taken out with a buffing wheel and then I gave them a little bit of a polish on the polishing mop. The adjusting nut had all the machining marks taken out with a buffing wheel and then I gave it quite a good polish on the polishing mop. This is the bit that you actually use so I wanted it nice and shiny. The axles were just polished back to a bright metal which took off the colour from the hardening process. I cut this shim from a piece of beer can, old speckled hen if I remember. This just spaced out the side plates a little bit more. Now the arms are moving nice and smoothly with no play, definitely not binding. On to the assembly which is quite straightforward. The first pin is a gentle push fit into the arm. That'll be just fine. second pin was a little bit tighter. I couldn't push it in. That actually needed a little bit of a tap to get it to go in. But again, that'll be just fine. I'm using one of the side plates as a rest stroke spacer so I get the pin in just the right position. That looks about right. Now we put the arms in position on the side plate. Put the spacer block in position followed by the beer can shim. Then the second side plate goes in place. Now the tool holder block gets fitted. Now I'll turn my attention to the adjusting screw. I'll fit the lower pivot block to the adjusting screw with a bit of Loctite just to make sure it doesn't come undone. The bottom of the adjusting screw is nicely flush with the pivot block. This is where I put the adjusting screw and pivot block assembled in the lathe and just took a quick skim across the bottom. Now the adjusting screw goes through the bottom arm And the spring goes on, then it goes through the slot in the top arm. So now we add the top pivot block, followed by the thrust washer, and then the adjusting nut. And it's about now I realise I've assembled it upside down. You plonker. I'll take that apart and put it back together properly off camera. Just knurling wheels to fit now and then it's finished.
I have to say I'm quite pleased with the way this has turned out. It looks nice and it's got a nice smooth action. Now let's see if it works. That's the tool set on centre height with a bit of scrap steel in the chuck. Uh, plenty of oil, slow speed, tighten down on the nut and see what happens. And there's my first knurl, which I'm quite pleased with. It's come out quite nicely. Here's the thumb wheel I made, which has been chamfered and finished a little bit better. And I'm very pleased with that. It's come out quite nicely. I hope you enjoyed watching this video series. I certainly enjoyed making the tool. I've now got a nice knurling tool and there's a certain degree of satisfaction in using a shop made tool which you know is better than a lot of the stuff you could buy off the shelf. My next project will be the Stuart Progress Oscillating Steam Engine. Really looking forward to that one, I hope you are too. Thanks for watching, see you next time.